Those same people are hoping that he can unify the title against this man, Michael Carbajal. Now, Ruben Castillo brought up an interesting point in talking to him about your fighting this guy almost in his hometown. Phoenix is a distance away, of course, from Las Vegas, but the implication being that you're coming out of Mexico again to fight. And there's the IBF light flyweight title belt. And it didn't phase Gonzalez. He's been everywhere to fight. I mean, he's been to Korea more times than... Uh, well, who's the president over there this week? <laughs> Sigmund Ree? That's about it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and you know, if he has a home a turf, of course, in the United States, it would be at the Forum in California. This is not it. This fight was supposed to be in Phoenix originally, where this man, I watched 16,000 people turn out at the America West Arena to see Carvajal fight Robin Sequesta. They are rabid fans for him in Phoenix, and even in this town, you can hear the reaction to Carvajal. Uh, a lot of his fans have followed him here. And, of course, two belts. Let's check the tail of the tape. Not only are there two belts, there are two ring announcers. I'll tell you about that in a moment. <laughs> Carvajal is 25, Gonzalez 26. Carvajal is four inches taller than Gonzalez, and they committed 107 and 107 and a half, 63, 64 inches in reach, little to choose between the two. The IBF WBC rules are combined for this cold title go. Ten-point must system, three knockdown rule in effect. No standing eight count, saved by the bell on the last round only. And only the referee, Mills Lane, can stop this fight. Now we've got two ring announcers. Jerry Roth, Stewart, and Minton are the judges at ringside. We have, we have Jimmy Lennon Jr., who will do the announcing, I think the opening remarks, along with Michael Buffer. Now Michael Buffer is kind of a good luck talisman, in addition to being an outstanding ring announcer, for the Michael Carbohall camp. And there's Michael right there, and they have asked that he be allowed to introduce Carvajal. Jimmy Lennon Jr. is going to introduce Humberto Gonzalez. So I'm going to start off by throwing it to Jimmy, and we'll let it go from there. Jimmy, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Las Vegas Hilton as we present the main event of the evening, La Explosion, the long-awaited showdown and unification of the IBF and WBC light flyweight titles scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing and brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated and Forum Boxing Incorporated in association with the Las Vegas Hilton and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout is co-sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, the supervisor, Osvaldo Bisbal. In conjunction with the International Boxing Federation, President Bobby Lee, Supervisor Alvin Goodman. Along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Matt Carasali, Bruce Lane, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave, with the Chief Inspector Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Pomansky, Dr. Robert Boyd, Dr. Al Capanna, Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, James Cavan and Mike Lasella, introducing the judges at ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Jerry Roth. From Lawnside, New Jersey, John Stewart. From Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico, Omar Mintun. And the referee in charge of this bout, he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Mills Lane. All right, fans, here we go. This is it, the main event of the evening, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, en la esquina roja. And now, ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red trim, and weighing in at an even 107 pounds. A man who in 1988 captured the hearts of all Americans, especially those of Mexican heritage, when he brought home to Phoenix, Arizona, an Olympic silver medal. His road to pride and glory continues as a professional with a perfect record of 27 and 0, his punching power proven with 15 knockout victories. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Presenting the undefeated IBF light flyweight Champion of the world, el hombre con las manitas de piedra, Michael Carvajal. And his opponent across the 
ring, introducing the defending WBC light flyweight champion of the world, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing yellow trunks with black trim, hailing from Ciudad Neza, Estado de México. He weighed in at a ready 107 and one half pounds, with a fine record of 35 wins, only one defeat, with 26 big wins by way of knockout. He is the two-time WBC light flyweight champion, known to the boxing world as El Pequeño Gigante de Nesa, introducing Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez. We've already been through the instruction in the dressing room one time. I expect a tough, clean fight. But check yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on. <laughs> There's more stick in this ring right now than, than, than I do in my act. You know that? I'm telling you. Are we talking? There's no business like show business. Michael Buffer got off the plane, couldn't That's even right. get his tuxedo on. No. He had to be here in his blue jeans because he had, couldn't Weather's get his tuxedo. Weather's a storm back east. Who got here? All right. Here we go. It's scheduled for 12. The unification light flyweight title. Carbohol is the IBF champion, but Humberto Gonzalez, the WBC champ. And Tom, are you surprised already that Gonzalez is coming out right-handed instead of left-handed? I would have thought he would have come out as a left. And Carvajal threw a right hand on him that had good night. Humberto written all over it. The guy just did right now. Now the wide punches of Gonzalez, which you're already seeing, are the ones that Carvajal thinks he can exploit in this bout. Between these two guys, 62 victories. 27 for Carvajal in an undefeated career. 35. For Gonzalez. Works the left of the body and throws the right hand in on top of that. The delight of his fans, uh, Gonzalez bangs away with a left and then a right. And sometimes when Michael Carball gets in trouble, it's because he lets this happen. He lets a fighter like a Gonzalez come in and push him against the ropes and whack him with punches. Gonzalez has a tendency now yeah, when he throws that left to bring it all oh, by way of third base, which yeah. might leave him wide open for that uppercut. Yeah, and Carball has a good right hand. Now, on the inside, Carball is a better inside fighter than some would think. And Gonzalez is finding that out right now. But, of course, as you know from watching Gonzalez, and you see him there, he works very well on the inside also. He does indeed. He may be atypical of the tough Mexican fighter, loves to go to the body and is a, like a wind-up toy. Crank him up, and he's going to be there as long as he can be there. They don't take backward steps. There's the right by Carball. This can't, this cannot be anything but a good bout. You're seeing why right here. Both men, good punchers, good technicians. Carball may be a little better technician, but Gonzalez is tough as you would want with a lot of power. You toss in some dedication on top of both of that and all of that, and you get yourself in for a busy evening. These two guys don't necessarily like each other, respect each other to be sure, but they aren't friends. Uh, and I'll tell you what, early in the match you can see, that what we're seeing is the Michael Carbohal who was thinking offense instead of defense. And when you see, and now Gonzalez switches to lefty. Yep. When you see that Michael Carbohal, you're in for a wild night. He'll get hit a lot and he'll hit his opponent a lot. And that's exactly what's happening. This is a great first round. Worthy of two champions and that's exactly what they are. Good. Actually, now I think it was a good ploy by Gonzalez to come out righty, then switch to lefty. Give Carvajal a couple of different looks. At the bell, a couple of oh, solid yeah. shots from each. Oh, yeah. And the first round of Dandy is in the book. Don't stay close to him. You need to get don't, don't stay close to him, okay? You got to stay outside. Keep popping him with that. Huh? Okay, okay, but wait, I know, Michael, I know, but look, he's trying, he's going to try to get a, 
he's going to try and land some low blows, okay? That's the only thing I don't want, all right? So keep sticking that jab. If he doesn't feel strong and you can stay and connect on his ass, okay. But I want that jab. I want that movement, okay? He's doing good. He's doing good. Very good advice from Danny Carvajal. They don't want Gonzalez. They don't want Carvajal on the inside all the time with Gonzalez. And Tom, the temptation is for Carball to be there because he is such a good inside fighter. They want more jabs from Carball. He only landed six of 26 in the first round. They want a better percentage of than that. And uh, Gonzalez hardly threw any at all. He was busy inside, banging away to the body and or the chin. Only threw eight and landed two. Gonzalez loves to live inside, as you see him there, backing Carvajal into Michael's corner. I'm going to tell you something, Tom. I don't care how many times, and there you see the numbers. Gonzalez with the edge in the first round. I don't care how many times they tell Carvajal to jab in this fight. I don't know that he's going to do it. I think he, he wants to slug it out with Gonzalez, and I think he's going to do it no matter what. Gonzalez wearing the yellow trunks with Chiquita. The white trunks. Michael Carvajal. Ruben Castillo, the ubiquitous one. He's been everywhere tonight. <laughs> He's been all over the place. Hasn't he? Joining us here at ringside, I'm Tom Kelly, along with Al Bernstein, of course, boxing's premier analyst. We're going to uh, turn to our Spanish bilingual friend. And Ruben, we want you to be listening in, in the corner and bring us up today. Did you have fun galloping around the building here? I know you have great respect for these two guys, Ruben, having talked with both of them, and they are, oh, solid right hand by Carvajal on the left. Gonzalez answered with one of his own and walks right in. There's a good left thrown by Carvajal. Carvajal wants the counterpunch against him. The danger, of course, is he's taking some punches to give them back. And I think I think so far what Gonzalez has shown in this bout that maybe is a surprise to Carvajal is his ability to punch straighter than Carvajal thought he would, Tom. I think that's why he's landing more punches. There's the body work by Carvajal, Tom, but, but he leaves himself open up the middle when he throws to the body. These two guys have been non-stop since the opening bell. A solid left. Another by Gonzalez and another combination left and right. Backs Carvajal against the ropes. As a lefty, Gonzalez will give Carvajal more trouble. It has always been so with Carvajal when he faces the lefty. Carvajal in white, Gonzalez in the yellow trimmed in black. Wild right hand that sailed over the head of Humberto, Chiquita, Gonzalez. And you know, oh, down goes Carvajal. Solid left hand, sent him flat on the back of his lap. The count is at five, six. We're in the second round and the crowd is on its feet and roaring as Carvajal is on his feet. And that came from Gonzalez in the left-handed stance. So Gon Carvajal finds out about the power of Gonzalez and I don't think they want Carvajal on the ropes which is where he is. Boy, he'd have to get on his bicycle if I were giving him instructions, Al. There's a lot of rounds yet to be fought. There's the bell. He looks at Gonzalez and <laughs> makes a face at him as he goes by. That didn't hurt Gonzalez at all. All right, Ruben. Oh, Danny's telling him to throw some short shots when he's inside. Why does he want him inside, Al? That's not the place for him, I should Well, think. I think now they want him on the inside because of this. For at, at a distance from the left-handed stance, he's having trouble with dealing with Gonzalez. So I think he's saying now when you're on the inside, you can land the uppercut. And there was the problem on the outside. As a lefty on the outside, Gonzalez gives Carvajal lots of trouble. If he, and if he's going to stay lefty, Carvajal's going to have to be on the inside. Well, a very dramatic um, moment in round number two when Carvajal was decked. Out they come for the third. Carvajal in white. Chiquita, Humberto, Gonzalez in the yellow. Back to the orthodox style. Mills Lane steps in and says, let's get it on, but let's get it up. 
And Tom, you know, you've watched Gonzalez in a lot of his fights, and some of them, his technique and and I think his intensity have been lacking, but not so tonight. Oh no. Well, I tell you, you, you look at his face, and I don't think he even knows where he is. He is dead focused on the man in front of him. I don't think anything is interfering and with his thought process. There is blood somewhere. I don't know who's cut, but there's blood on the, the arm of Michael Carbajal. And it might be Carbajal. It there's, doesn't look as though Gonzalez is showing any blood as Carbajal bangs away. They are, they are banging heads. In there. It's Gonzalez. It's the, the left eye of Gonzalez. And it came from a right hand of Carbajal. Carbajal lands a solid shot on Gonzalez. And look, look how this fight has oh. changed now on the inside. And Carbajal told Danny, his brother, I can fight better on the inside. And Danny said, stay on the outside. But Danny changed his tune after he saw that knockdown. So give him credit for being adaptable. Well, I tell you, they are forehead to forehead. And not all of the punches are landing above the belt. They are throwing him from everywhere. Carbajal throwing the right hand, and I mean, he is getting it in against Gonzalez because Gonzalez is lowering his left. Well, I talked to Danny Carbajal earlier. He said he's going to start throwing, have Michael throw the right hands early in the round, and he'll try to take him out with the left hook. It is the left eye of Gonzalez that is bleeding exactly where we'll have to get a better look at it. Gonzalez puts Carbajal to the rope right above us. Another left hand sends Carbajal back. Carbajal has always had trouble with a straight left from a southpaw. He's having trouble with it tonight, but boy, that is an angry cut, and I think it did come from a punch, not from a clash of heads. So that could be real trouble for Gonzalez. But a good round for Carbajal. The best part of the round for Gonzalez is at long range with that left hand down, as you pointed out. And Michael has been able to stay inside and land right hands whenever he feels like it. And right on the eye of Gonzalez. Good solid right by Gonzalez. Drives Carvajal back. Gonzalez again on top of his band. But Carvajal shoves him away and they're at long range. This is not the game plan that they anticipated in Carvajal's camp. It is what Gonzalez wanted, minus the cut, of course. But there's no question Gonzalez has been hit with so many counter right hands by Carvajal that more, way more than they anticipated or wanted. Above us, they turn everything loose, these two. Gonzalez with a flurry of short on the target punches as we come to the close of round number three. The combination punching of Gonzalez, a big surprise, I'm sure, to Carvajal. We're in the corner now, oh look at that cut. That is a tough cut, Ruben, right above the eye there. It's right in the eye, Lance. He wants to throw the punches right to the face and not hit his gloves. He wants to get him in the corner and then throw four combinations, left, right, left, right. They want him to faint also. Here's another look back at some of the action. Carvajal had some very fine moments in round number three. Tommy he found on the inside two punches would work for him. The uppercut, there it is, and also the short right hand, which Ruben alluded to that Danny Carbo had wanted him to throw in this bout. On our card tonight, nothing has gone the distance. There's been a knockout in every one of our fights, and here we are in the unification title go for the light flyweight title. That's Gonzalez in yellow, Carbajal in white. Carbajal was down from a straight left and in we, round number two. We said that it, would, it became a battle of the inside. Only 21 of 158 punches in the last round were jabbed. They were all power punches, and they were throwing every punch for a knockout. Mills Lane, the referee, took a moment to chastise uh, Gonzalez. Apparent low blows. Of course, he has the uh, right to take a point away. And of course, remember, with Carball being down, that would have been a two-point round when he was sent down. That's right. But I don't oh, know. Good right hand by Carvajal. The likelihood of this going to a decision right now just seems remote to me. It does to me, too. And Carvajal's right hand now giving Gonzalez a lot of trouble. Good uppercut. Another one by Gonzalez. Another straight left. More of them. Carvajal moved just to his left there off the ropes. He should make that move more often. 
And boy, that, that left eye looks so angry of, of uh, Gonzalez. It's not only cut, it's also swollen. And the blood continues to trickle down from it. His corner's done a nice job, but they're going to have to be at their very best to stem the flow. Carvajal bangs away. Let me tell you something. 107, 107 and a half pounds, and these two little guys just whack away. They're hard punches for their weight, both of them, and they're showing it. Is that short right again by Carvajal? Gonzalez very, finds it very difficult on the inside to defend against that shot. A lot of blood on the face of Carvajal, but it's Gonzalez's blood. Carvajal is undefeated, 27-0. Gonzalez on a cut, the only fight he lost. He's 35-1. and one. Two great champions. Again, that left brings a roar from the crowd. You see Carvajal trying to work his way inside where he's actually safe from that straight left. So, see, there's where he can land the right hand, Carvajal. Only on the inside. From the outside, he gets countered with the left hand of Gonzalez. Carvajal having a good round, several combinations, and now Gonzalez backs him into the ropes above us. Chiquita Gonzalez, you look at his face. He is so determined in this bout. He's taken a lot of counterpunches by Carvajal, but it is not deterring him at all. He's coming forward. Banging away inside the short, solid punches. Gonzalez scoring repeatedly. Tom, I think the combination punching in the hand speed of Gonzalez much better than I've seen in any other bout I've, I've watched him in. And you can see it has had an impact on Carvajal. He is surprised. No question about it. Carvajal's been great with that right hand. But Chiquita just seems to ignore it, walking right through it, throwing punches and bunches. What a great fight. Well, there's nothing there. Good. Give, it to him give, now, give me another one, Angel. Give me another one. Okay, when you get a chance to land that upper, I told you, that son of a bitch hit you a low blow, give it back to him. <laughs> Mills don't, don't want to do anything about it, you take care of it. If you give him one, he'll stop. Okay? Michael Carvajal has been so effective on the inside. When he's in there, he, that's the range he can land that right from. Now, when he's farther back, he can't land the right because Gonzalez is able to deal with it better from the southpaw stance. But here on the inside, that's the range where that punch can get there. And it bounces right off the eye, which, uh, of course, is still cut. And is going to be a worrisome, bothersome thing at best for Gonzalez as we get on here with the fight. Out they come for round number five. Carvajal still effective with the right. Down he goes. Gonzalez knocks him down across the way. Second knockdown. At seven, he's up. Humberto Gonzalez this runs time. across the ring after him. This time, Carvajal is hurt. Not he is hurt indeed. And Gonzalez sensing that the entire title can be his. But Carvajal counterpunching back off those ropes. But he would do better to use his legs if he has them. Wow. Gonzalez disdaining any form of defense, walking right in on his man. And that's where Carvajal's safe. I'm telling you, he needs to stay right off the chest of Gonzalez. That's the only place he is safe. Carvajal suddenly landing some good solid rights. Do you think that maybe Chiquita's pushed himself out of well, there? Well, he could be tired. We'll see. Carvajal with a low blow Indeed. gets the warning from Mills Lane. That was a ploy on his part. Gonzalez. No love lost between these two. Ruben, I think, was right. I think that Gonzalez is a little tired here now. Solid right hands by Carvajal, who's fighting his way back from his second knockdown. Let's see, Gonzalez reach back and get oh. some second win. This, this fight has the makers of a classic because Carvajal has now come back and he is landing some excellent shots against Gonzalez. Well, you don't go 27-0 and, and be a champion without being able to do some stuff in that ring. The difference in this bout that has shocked Carvajal is the power of Gonzalez and his hand speed. Gonzalez falling prey to that right hand by Carvajal. I think Chiquita has pushed himself out of bed, Tom, and now. 
But, you know, the interesting thing is Carvajal not really hurting him with those big, solid punches. He's going to have to land a lot of them to make the difference here against Gonzalez. Unfortunately for Gonzalez, they have all landed right on that yeah. left eye, which is cut and is swelling. This is a classic round. I mean, this one is one of the best rounds, I think, that I've seen in a long time in boxing. And I was privileged to call that 10th round of the Bo Holyfield fight. This one, right up there with it. Carvajal seems to have his mouth open a lot, Ruben, like he's looking for some air. See the mouthpiece a lot. I think that's more habit than anything else, Tommy. He does that from round one on. Just a few seconds left in round five. What a battle, worthy of two great champions no matter what the division. There it is. Woo! Chiquita Gonzalez landed a strong right hand and then another right that was almost a hook, really, that sent Carvajal down. Carvajal exchanging with him at, at, at longer range, and that's where Gonzalez was dangerous. And, of course, the power of Gonzalez really never questioned, but what some people wondered is would he hit Carvajal with those kind of punches. That cut over the uh, left eye of Gonzalez is an ugly thing at best. Boy, I tell you, is he grim-jawed, huh? Here we go for round number six. And now, an important point here is, if we're talking about potential decisions, twice now, Michael Carbajal has been down. There should, there could be two two-point rounds against him. Indeed. And again, are, is anybody using the jab? Only five of the, the 83 punches landed in the last round were jabs. Long right hand. Connected, but not as well as Carvajal wanted it to. Counters with the right. I think that Carvajal is shocked that Gonzalez has not been hurt by some of the power punches he has landed. I'm very surprised, uh, Tom, and now that, that Michael Carvajal has his own punches uh, in bunches. Michael's always been known to throw three or four shots at a time. He's taking one shot at a time to this guy. And here's Gonzalez back fighting in the orthodox stance now when he uh, seemed to be at his very best as a southpaw. Ironically, it has been Gonzalez who has thrown many more combinations. Now he goes back to lefty, an excellent right. move. And scores with a right and left combination. This fight reminds me a lot of when Livingstone Bramble fought Ray Mancini. He fought righty for a long time, then moved to lefty. When he moved to lefty, it made a big difference. Now he's back as a right-handed orthodox style fighter. Gonzalez, that is, forehead to forehead. There's the jab of Carball, the one they wanted earlier. And when Gonzalez is in a conventional stance, that jab can land. And I don't know if I was uh, Chiquita Gonzalez, I don't know that I'd fight as a righty at all in this bout anymore. Oh, nice combination by Carvajal. Hall. Comes back and scores with the left hand, missing with the right. If Michael Carvajal would come back to win this unification bout for the rest of his career, coming back in that fifth round would remain a special moment. Gonzalez steps it up a notch, driving Carvajal back as he moves in on the man from Phoenix. He's had him down twice in the second round and again in the fifth. We're in round number six. Less than a minute to go in the sixth round. It's scheduled for 12. They're not quite halfway through it. What conditioning is going to be as important an item in this fight, gentlemen, as anything else. And the scoring is going to be difficult. The only thing that makes this fight in favor of Gonzalez at this point are the two knockdowns. Other than that, they've been so even in what they have done. Gonzalez again with that left eye bleeding. Also closing, I think, Tom. I mean, the, the well, vision is going to be tough. That's right. The swelling. He backs Carvajal against the ropes and lands a series of punches most of which were unanswered. Again, and he's got Carvajal, I thought, in a bit of trouble over there. And then Carvajal came back with a big right hand of his own. This is a special performance by both men. I don't know if they can do this over 12 rounds. Ya está muy cansado, Beto. 
He says he's, a, he says he's very tired. He wants him to fade to throw up top. They're saying that he's much more stronger than him. Fade and throw the punches over the top. He said they think he's very, very tired, huh? They want to throw a right hand and a left hook. There are numbers that indicate how close this fight is, and almost all the rounds have been similar, with Gonzalez throwing more, but landing about the same amount as Michael Carball. But those two knockdowns loom large. Round number seven. In the middle of the ring. Michael Carvajal has been down twice in the second round and again in the fifth. And the, one of the main differences here is simple. Carvajal is not hurting Gonzalez with his big power punches. Gonzalez is hurting him. A flurry by Umberto, and he's got Carvajal on the ropes. Well, it's interesting. Coming off what was a lackluster performance against Melkor Cop Castro that you guys saw, this is a different Humberto Gonzalez, isn't it? No question about it. He, um, But I think uh, everybody has a bad day every now and then, and even great champions can throw in a clinker. It's the great champion in them that uh, makes them win despite having a bad day. Tom, I'm sure you and uh, Hal agree with me that you can see the confidence in Chiquita's face, although it is better. Yeah, you're right, because he knows he can walk in. The problem is, can he continue to sustain those right hands to the eye without this fight being stopped? I think they've done a, very, a remarkable job in the stopping oh, the blood. They, yes, have, they have, yeah, and it's only the question of the swelling. Oh, my! Oh. That should be a knockdown! That should be a knockdown! He went against the ropes, and it kept him up. Milk Lane made a mistake there. All of a sudden, Carvajal renewed interest as he sends a Gonzalez reeling against the ring ropes. But give Gonzalez credit. He is coming back as Carvajal did. But I'll tell you what, that should have been a knockdown because he went reeling against the ropes and only the ropes kept him up. Again, the right hand by Carvajal. He hurts Gonzalez with a right and then a left. Another right and left. And Carvajal is fighting his way back. What a battle. What a testimony to two great tough champions this one is. Unbelievable. And there were questions about both coming into this fight. There are no questions now. Skill-wise, courage-wise, and power-wise, they have shown what they have. And it's plenty, and it's the best this division has to offer. Well, there's no question about it. Well, as long as there was no knockdown, it would have to be a very one-sided, impressive round for Carvalho. Oh! He's got Gonzalez down, and he may not get up. Only he's not going to get up. It's done. It's over. Marble Hall comes from behind to win it. An amazing come from behind victory for Michael Carvalho. Hall. In the seventh round, he turns it upside down and wins the unification bout, and the ring is that one now. The punch that did it was a huge left hook after he had hurt Gonzalez early in the round. And Michael Carball will forever remember the fifth round when it could easily have been him that went down. And I don't think it's overstated to say these two men put on more than a special performance. This has to be the fight of the year, would you agree? Well, it's the best fight I've seen in the year, I'll tell you that, and maybe in a lot of years. Spectacular performance by both men, and what what was at work here, I think, and it's, we, we've been given the scoring, and you know what? Michael Carvajal was behind by four points on every single scorecard. Can I tell you, on my scorecard, which means nothing, he, I only had him winning one round. Well, so he needed a knockout or would have at some point to get back to win this fight. 
And while he wasn't hurting Gonzalez with his shots earlier in the fight, he ended up hurting him very badly with the left hook. And that young man, Chiquita Gonzalez, even though he lost this fight, Tom, I think answered in the affirmative any questions about him as a fighter. He is still a tremendous fighter. Here's another look at how it all ended. Remember, this man, Gonzalez, had been knocked into the ropes. The ropes keeping him from going down. And now Carbajal hit him with the left hand and as Gonzalez reached for him and Carbajal stepped away, Chiquita went to the deck. There's the right. I think that punch hurt him, but this left There's hook the left. right on the chin. I don't think you can land a more compact left hook. Tommy, remember I was telling you that Danny Carbajal said they're going to show the right hand, show the right hand in the early part of the fight and try to take him out with the left hook. Exactly what happened. And that is exactly what did take place. And the, the fact that this was such a short, compact left hook, I think, is what made it really work for him. Well, it's interesting. Carbajal had won only one round. He was trailing by four points. He had been knocked down twice. First in the second and again in the fifth. And he came 180 degrees to knock Roberto Chiquita Gonzalez down and out in the seventh round. Jimmy Lennon has the official time. Jimmy, if you will, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, 59 seconds. In round number seven, the winner by way of knockout, the new WBC and IBF unified light flyweight champion of the world, Las Manitos de Piedra, Michael Carvajal. But I tell you, it was a great fight. Paul Banky and uh, put on a great fight with Saragossa at the Forum, oh, maybe about a year ago now, and it was just a total war. But I tell you, neither one of these two men took a back seat. Neither one gave an inch. They just fought their hearts out. And for this man, the winner, to turn it all around in the seventh round, trailing on every judge's scorecard. Amazing. Well, they're giving Humberto Chiquita Gonzalez deservedly a magnificent round of applause. Michael Carvajal wins it. And he, the new unified champion, is there with Al Bernstein. Now the Michael Carvajal, a, Michael Carvajal, a jubilant Michael Carvajal. It was an incredible performance. i got to ask you first, how hurt were you in the fifth, and did you think you might not be able to make it through? No, I always thought I made it through when Danny told me in the corner, are you all right, Mike? I said, yeah, I'm all right, man. I could take a punch. You know, he knocked me down the first time I ever been down. I was down yeah. twice. I knew where I was at at all times. I think the second knockdown, I was a little hurt more than yeah. the first. He, but, hey, I came on, and, hey, I knew I was going to come wait, out. You, you, I, was, I was telling Danny in the corner, don't worry about it, Danny. Just relax. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't I'm, worry about it. I'm bad, man. Uh, look. It was a great performance. Hey, Let I'm me ask strong. you a question. Were you a little surprised? At his hand speed and his combinations early, they were better than I think maybe even anyone would have anticipated. Oh, yes. Um, he was a little quicker than I yeah. thought. But, um, you know, I kind of fought on the inside, which yeah. Danny told me to box. But I knew I, I felt stronger than he was. Yeah, you guys changed your strategy, and we heard you talking about it. Because on the outside, as a lefty, you were having trouble. But then you went on the inside, and the uppercut was the key weapon. Yes, it was. You know, I was trying to work the body, but he was so short. I couldn't get my good body shots in. But after I landed that uppercut, and I seen him lay down, I but, said, ah, oh, he don't got no heart, he ain't going to get up. Well, he's got heart, he's got oh, some yeah, heart, yeah. but, but he didn't have the, it there. From all the other punches, yeah, yeah but that, I knew one time I knocked him down, he wouldn't get back right, up. Let's, let's take a look at, oh. the left hook you hit him with was perfect. It should have been yes. two knockdowns. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, went, the did. way he fell down, I knew he wasn't going to get up. And, all, my, all my opponents fall like that, you know, I got some power there. Hey. This is the them kind right of hands were killing oh, them. Now you were able to hit him with the right a lot during the course of the fight. That's what created the cut. But did you always feel the left hook would be the punch that would knock him down? I knew if I landed a good solid punch, I was going to get him. But I didn't think he could take a punch that much. And I give him heart. I mean credit because he did take a punch more than I thought he did. Yeah, it was. I a, he would. I well, mean. I'll tell you what. You hit him with some big shots. Uh, Michael, and also, I think when you were laying on the ropes, you were hit with probably more shots than you wanted to be, huh? Yeah, I was, um, but I felt strong in there. I felt stronger than he was. Everybody said, he's stronger than you. He's stronger. 
but I knew it myself that, man, I, I'm a strong guy. I'm like, I'm like Bruce Lee. Look at me. <laughs> well, let me get your brother Danny in here. He says not to worry. Were you worried in the corner? Well, you know, at, in, at the second knock, the knockdown, yeah, because he, he looked hurt. And, well, he was. I oh, think. yeah, yeah. But, but the first one, yeah, when I saw right. him, he jumped up real quick. And, and he looked at me and he went, I'm all right. And I could see his eyes clear. So when he came back, I said, look, don't stay right there because that's all he's trying yeah. to do. Every time that, that you land a good yeah. combo, he'll come at you. So after you land a combo, oh, give him a little movement and he won't touch shit. This is going to sound like maybe an odd question. Are you extra proud of your brother right now? Extra proud. God couldn't have gave us a better brother or a better parent. God will put this guy in a total right. package. Congratulations. Oh, I want to say something. Right, I want to thank um, Philip Pippen for um, he's a massage therapist and um, I had a stiff neck earlier in the week and without him I couldn't make it through this right. fight and I like to and I and, and it's a revenge for my sparring partner Ray Conejito Hernandez and also I like to thank Dr. Hernandez for uh, recommending me to uh, Philip Pippen. Okay. Thanks a lot Philip I couldn't do it without you. Special Wonderful. effort. Congratulations Michael. Now let's go to the loser but boy not a loser in many ways Chiquita Gonzalez. Okay thank you uh, Al. Tom I want to ask Chiquita Going into the fifth round, uh, going into the sixth round, did he think the fight was over because he had Michael Carbajal very, very hurt? And when did he feel like he was losing this fight? Chiquita, primeramente, te quiero preguntar, en el quinto round, cuando tenías a Michael Carbajal bien, bien lastimado y que no sabía dónde estaba, ¿qué, qué pensaste tú en el, sept, en el sexto que, que uh, a, a, a salió para el sexto tirando golpes? No, lo que pasa es que ella pensaba que era mi, 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 mi gran triunfo y decir así. Pero ni mala, ni, ni, ni de qué este, eh, poner mala este, pelea, sino que me agarró. Y ni modo, yo ganando, pero me agarró. No sé cómo pasó, pero me agarró. I'm going to ask him if the eye affected him because of the cut and the swelling. Is, ¿No te afectó el ojo, la cortada y, y lo hinchado del ojo? No, no, nada de eso. Lo que pasa es que me agarró. Yo estaba bien y yo iba a tirar golpes, yo lo había tirado y todo. Y esa pelea es mía, pero me agarró y ni modo. Uh, I want to ask him now, how far does he think Michael Carvajal can go? Quiero preguntar, ¿qué tan lejos crees tú que puede ir Michael Carvajal de campeón? No, lo que pasa que es que pues no hay nada este, aquí pues, eh, escrito y todo puede suceder. Yo este, perdí ahora y ni modo, yo seguiría adelante en busca de otro, otro chance. Well, he said that he, uh, he said there's nothing right now in, the, in that division, so Michael can go a long way. And I'm going to ask him now, what's next for him? Ahora que sigue para ti, chiquita, en tu carrera. Lo que pasa es que ya estaba visto gane o pierda y era campeonato mundial mosca, pero perdí y ni modo, hubiera ganado, hubiera sido mejor. Pero ahora tengo que hacer méritos para el título mundial mosca. Okay, he says that he's going to now move up to the flyweight division. It would have been much better if he'd have won the fight, but uh, he didn't, and uh, so, so on. Uh, say la vie, but he's going to move up to the to the flyweight division. Uh, felicidades, man. Una pelea muy muy grande y no tienes nada que. Uh, let's go back to ringside to Tom Kelly.